1045, the team, you're home for New York sports. The Giants got a big one uh, Thursday night against the Eagles, so we're going to Philly. We're talking to our boy Chris Carlin from 94 WIP in Philly. Chris, let's start with uh, with the Wentz wagon. Like everybody was all about, you know, Carson Wentz. Now it's it seems to be losing some of the luster. Is is there anything they should really be concerned about, or is this just fickle fans? You know, I I don't think it's fickle fans. I mean, you can't argue with the numbers since week six. The two guys in the NFL that have the worst two quarterback ratings are Jared Goff and Carson Wentz, and that's not the best company you want to be in right now if you're Carson Wentz, but. Um, I think you see things through the course of the year as you watch him play that have you very encouraged about where he is. Now, he still makes the big mistakes in some early spots, particularly early in games, had an interception on his first series the other day. I don't know if it's getting anxious. We saw in the first time he played the Giants through two picks right early in the game um, that, that uh, the Giants were able to convert. Um, I don't know if it's nerves or what it is. He seems to settle down pretty nicely after that. But, hey, for him right now, it's still a learning process. It's late in the year. And I do think that um, it's not making an excuse for him because he played pretty well last week. I do think you get toward the end of that rookie year, especially when you're a quarterback, it's kind of more mentally exhausting than anything else. I think he's, you know, if you had a quiet moment with him, he's probably looking forward to the season being over. Uh, just so he can kind of uh, refuel. But um, I think there's no reason at the moment to jump off the Wentz wagon, so to speak. The Eagles are 5-9 and nine now. If they beat the Giants and win the Week 17 matchup as well, they would have the same record they had last season. Is this season going to be deemed a success because they now could have a future franchise quarterback in Carson Wentz? I don't know if they're going to deem it a success. I think the fans are not going to deem it a success. The worst thing that could have happened, to be quite honest, is to start 3-0. And when that that happened, everybody's expectations jumped off the page and you understand why. Uh, But they, quite frankly, just do not have anywhere near the playmakers on offense they need to have. And they, they don't have any right now, to be quite honest. Zach Ertz, maybe but he's not a guy that's going to go break six tackles and, uh, you know, after he makes a catch, uh, he's going to be a reliable tight end. That's what he does. But other than that, their receivers are nothing to speak of. Um, you know, Wendell Smallwood, who looked really good in some flashes, he's done for the year. Ryan Matthews has run it a little bit okay, but I still get the impression they don't trust him late in the games to be able to hold on to the ball. I think when you factor in all that stuff, um, you understand that it's a year where you were going to take some lumps, but I wouldn't call it a year where they look at it as a success just because they found the quarterback. I think that is the biggest thing to take out of the year, but the wins and losses just weren't there, especially after you start 3-0. and 104.5, the team, LeVac and Goss, talking to Chris Carlin from 94 WIP in Philly. So, Chris, I look at this team, and when you say a lack of playmakers, I, I still kind of blame Chip Kelly. Like, Is that the prevailing wisdom, and how long does it take to dig out of the hole he dug? He is the chip that keeps on chipping, so to speak. <laughs> there's no doubt. Uh, you know, there's no doubt because you look around the league, and the guys that Chip wanted to get rid of are still out there making big plays. LaShawn McCoy, uh, you know, Deshaun Jackson, who – it's heavily rumored is going to come back next season. Um, guys like that, that he did everything he could to, to shovel away on the team, that absolutely still sticks in their minds, and they still uh, blame Chip Kelly for a lot of that. And it's amazing that, you know, when you look at the last few years, 10 and 6, 10 and 6, 7 and 9, you would think, oh, that's not that terrible. But think about everything that Chip Kelly did there and obviously rubbed a lot of people wrong behind the scenes to get pushed out the door two 10 win seasons in three years and then seven and nine in the third year i mean you wouldn't think that would get you fired normally but obviously there were a lot of extenuating circumstances and they're still working their way back from that right now and you know chip wanted lane johnson and lane johnson just is now getting back from a 10 game suspension his second ped suspension things like that so there's no doubt that the chip still weighs very much on a lot of people's minds, and they're not too disappointed to see his team with one win 
out west. Short turnaround for both teams now as they kick off on Thursday night. The Giants have been playing some great football, knocking off playoff teams like the Detroit Lions, the Dallas Cowboys. Do the Eagles pose any chance for an upset? And if so, what's their biggest matchup that can pose that upset possibility? Well, I think they do have a chance in the game. I, I don't think there's any any question about that. I, I think that, you know, ultimately they're going to have to find ways to move the football consistently. Um, I give them a lot of credit for Sunday in that they ran the football very well against the number one rush defense in the league. And frankly, I think they weren't expecting to run the ball that well. I think they were kind of surprised by it. You know, Carson Wentz had a play where he wasn't getting rid of the football soon enough, and he kind of coughed it up on the near sideline, and it went out of bounds. But, you know, after that, they were mysteriously running the football a whole lot more, and, uh, you know, they were very effective. I mean, Ryan Matthews was was very good the other day. So they're going to have to run it. Um, there's there's no question if they're going to be effective, they're going to have to run it because uh, it's what they would do. Um, they haven't taken enough advantage of those strengths. If you look at Wentz, now there have been a couple of games that were blowouts. You know, people point to the Bengals game. They were down 29 nothing in the Bengals game. When that's the case, you're going to um, have to uh, throw the football a ton. They threw it 34 times in the fourth quarter that day. But, you know, when you're trying to come back, that's what you have to do. Now, you look at the other games, though, there have been no reason for Wentz to throw the ball 40 to 45 times. The, the run-pass ratio has not been near what it's supposed to be, and unfortunately in Philadelphia, that has a lot of people thinking about Andy Reid days. Um, even though he was as successful as he was, that's what people point to. So, look, if the Eagles are going to have a chance, they're going to have to run the football effectively on Thursday night. Chris, you've worked with or heard from New York fans early on in your career. Now you're working in Philadelphia. What's the biggest difference between New York sports fans and Philadelphia sports fans? i tell you what. Um, I think so far, and keep in mind I've only been here a couple of months, it's really been about the in-depth knowledge of the Philadelphia fan um, versus, you know, the New York fan – knows their stuff in depth and they follow everything, but I'll give you an example, okay? The first month of the time that I was here, they were screaming and yelling because of their lack of playmakers to give Paul Turner an opportunity off the practice squad. I've never (laughs) spent a day talking about a practice squad player before I got to Philadelphia. You know, so that, that gives you an idea. Like, they are locked in on every facet of the Eagles and uh, it's pretty impressive. It really is pretty impressive. It's got to make it difficult for you, Chris. Like you know that these guys are so dialed in that you're going to hear a name you've never heard before, and you got to get ready for it <laughs> on the fly. Hey, it's like being back in school, right? You got to go back and study. That's kind of what that's kind of what the first few months have been for me—a a crash course. But at the same time, it's been a blast. You know that Philly Philly's got that outside reputation that we all know. Of you know, really, really tough fans. But I got to be honest, they have been tremendous to me so far, and I've really enjoyed it. And, you know, I, I think that that rep is off of a couple of isolated incidents. And we all know this. Every town has its suspect fans in terms of how they act and <laughs> such. I just think it's stuck with Philadelphia more than anything else. Absolutely, Chris. And we don't doubt your ability to pull that off and going back to school because, like you, I am a proud Hobart statesman. Oh, so the esteemed go. Hobart <laughs> College has helped you get to where you are, no doubt about it, in my opinion. <laughs> Ringing the statesman bell. That's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Garland, he, uh, he does it all. He used to do it in New York. Now he's talking about it in Philly. We love you, man. We appreciate your, uh, your help. I tell you what, I'm studying a hell of a lot more now than I did at Hobart. <laughs> I can tell that just by working with guys. Take care. See ya. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Thanks, guys. Take care.